Hey, good morning everyone. It is Gerda here from Private Practice Success and I'm doing a live cross. It is Monday morning in a beautiful sunny Brisbane. Um, and I'm working from home today. Of course, it is school holidays. My boys are at vacation care, but I've got my eldest daughter who's 14. She's um, home and I'm always very fortunate that I have the ability to work from home if I choose to do so. So uh, what I'm doing this morning in terms of going live with you guys is I want to do the video of the week. So um, in my private practice um, success Facebook group for practice owners, um, I've spoken to the guys there, to all of you, and I've said that I want to do a video of the week. And I've asked you guys to actually let me know what is the topics that you want me to cover. And I've asked you to post in the comment section of that pin post in the group a topic that you want me to look at. And it has to just be one topic. I'm only doing one thing at a time so you can really delve into it. And it has to be as specific as possible. Because the more specific your question, the better I can answer that for you. So as we're waiting uh, just for people to come um, on live, I thought I'll give you a quick tour and show you where I'm at. So I'm actually on the balcony here just outside of my bedroom um, where I live, of course. And um, there's my youngest. He loves looking at the stars. Um, so that's his telescope that I got for him. It's, it's, it looks big, but it's just like a bit of a toy telescope, but at least you can see the, the moon pretty well. Um, I live here in Queensland. I've got the shade up here. So we're looking through the shade, but you can see there's a little piece of the bay of the water sticking out because I absolutely love uh, the water. I'll also show you um, down here. I love this balcony because I can sit up here having coffee, um, you know, working away on my laptop, watching the kitties at play. Uh, when they're in the pool over the summer holidays, of course. Uh, yeah, so this is this is pretty cool where I'm at. That's my neighbors. <laughs> yeah, this is the view, and this is my little little piece of um, well, what I like to call Bali heaven. I'm turning this into my little Bali retreat right outside of my bedroom, where I am talking to all of you from. Okay. All right, so yes, this is a live video because I do prefer some engagement. I know that it's so hard to always get you guys live on here when I'm live because a lot of you are still doing clinical client work, which means that you're at the practice and if you're very disciplined, you won't be on social media. <laughs> okay, but I suggest you put the notifications on so that you can know when I'm live and you can join me because I do prefer to have engagement and have interactions, get you to ask some live questions that I can answer rather than just sitting here and speaking to myself. All right, so let's get stuck into our very first video of the week. Now, um, this video is all about how to market provisional psychologists. Hi, Lana. Thanks for joining me. Um, to how to market provisional psychologists. And this question was posed by Michelle. Michelle is a practice owner from, um, I think you are in... Melbourne, if I'm right, Michelle. <laughs> yes, Lana and Michelle is from, um, both are from Melbourne, uh, if my memory serves me right. If I'm not right, Lana, please correct me. And um, I know Michelle's got a group private practice there and she's looking at engaging some provisional psychologists at her practice. So how do I market a provisional psychologist? Well, I will tell you what I do, okay? And then I will tell you what you could do. So for me at the Psych Professionals, I've had my practice for 10 years now and it's two group private practices and thus far I've only had two provisional psychologists join my team. 
um, I guess, and, and with all due respect to provisional psychs, I would always prefer to have a fully registered psychologist at the practice because it just makes it so much easier. Hey. Um, however, when I have taken on provisional psychologists, I have done it for a specific reason. So the first provisional psych I took on was probably now about three years ago, um, Samantha. And Sam had a very awesome and very specific niche interest area. So Samantha does animal assisted therapy and she had this beautiful uh, Labrador called Sunny. Um, and she was able to offer animal assisted therapy at the practice, which means that we could offer something that nobody else had to offer. Um, and I knew and I was very confident that I would be able to market that niche area to my GPs. And I knew that the GPs would probably love this. I know that as a parent, I would love it if my kids had to go to counseling and if they actually had a counseling experience where there is an animal involved. And it was true because I saw it in action with the AAT that we did. Uh, because for in the kids' mind, um, it's we're not going to see Samantha, we're not going to counseling, we're going to see Sunny, the dog. Um, so they were much better at um, actually coming through the doors, coming consistently because they had a relationship not only with the psychologist, um, provisional psych in this instance, but also with the therapy dog. So that was a really easy setup. Um, at that time, three years ago now, uh, we charged, hi Lisa, Lisa, welcome, thanks for joining us. Um, uh, we are actually, just to update you, talking about how to market provisional psychologists um, to your referrers. So at that time when I had Samantha, who was a provisional psychologist, when she joined, it was really easy marketing because she offered animal-assisted therapy and we were very successful in marketing her. And that was now three years ago. We charged $85 per session and clients happily paid it and we were able to fill her up pretty quickly. Okay, so that was the first provisional psych I've had at the practice. So um, currently I have another provisional psychologist. Um, his name is Andrew. Um, Andrew joined the practice probably three months ago now. Um, and Andrew's only the second provisional psychologist I've ever had. So um, Andrew really impressed me um, speaking to him on the phone. He really impressed me in the interview. And if you can impress me, uh, it just doubles your chances of coming on board. Uh, the other reason why um, Andrew was successful in um, getting a position with the psych professionals is also the fact that he had completed most of his um, supervision period. So um, Andrew's probably like three quarters of the way through and he probably has another six months to go. So I do know that there's an end in sight, um, an end that's not too far away. And it's my hope that when he gets to the end that we can convince him to stay and for him to be then a fully fledged member of our team. Um, Andrew also offers um, couples counseling. Now, although I had a psychologist at the practice that did um, couples counseling, it's always good to have another person because one person can only take on so much work. Um, so um, he brought that with him and he was also a very experienced um, counselor. So he had many years counseling experience. He had gone back and he had gone to actually do now his psychology qualification. So it's also not like he was fresh out of uni with very little life experience or with very little counseling experience. He actually brought a lot of experience with him, but he was also willing, sorry, that's my neighbor's dog um, barking at me. Uh, but he's also willing to put in the work required um, to learn more. So he has that attitude of really being eager to learn. So to answer uh, the question around how do I market Andrew as a provisional psych? So Andrew, yes, he might do couples counseling, but it's not as niched and as specialist and as special as something like animal assisted therapy that I had when I had um, Samantha. The answer to that is I don't market him. 
all right I actually don't market him um, I market the practice I market the site professionals so Logan home is our dedicated trauma center Kapalaba is our dedicated child and adolescent center I continue to market the practice um, each of my team members also play a part in the marketing and we continue to market each of their individual um, special interest areas their own little niche areas whether it's um, trauma work whether it's working with ASD uh, whether it's working with bipolar whatever it is okay so we just continue to do our marketing as per normal uh, however when clients ring in our reception our front desk team is trained to really triage the referrals that's coming into the practice especially if it is referrals just made out to the psych professionals or maybe it's made out to a clinician who is fully booked for the next two three months and just can't take on any more clients then we will look at what the presenting problem is and if that person is a match for my provisional psychologist we will recommend that they see the provisional psychologist and of course we tell them that Andrew is a provisional psychologist and we have um, trained the CRT and they're actually having a CRT and admin meeting this morning right as we speak uh, where they're getting some more training in terms of how to talk to clients about what a provisional is and you know answer any questions they might have as a result so we are still able to direct clients that come to us through our traditional marketing efforts and traditional marketing channels to go and see our provisional psychologist so um, we have a done I think when Andrew started we did like a general letter out just introducing him to our doctors but that that has been it from what I know um, and other than that we like I said just fill him up um, in the traditional way through the clients that's already being referred to us and it works all right of course it's really important that reception knows how to do that uh, reception needs to be able to instill that confidence that although you are seeing a provisional you know they can treat you just as well as a fully registered psych and you know what in some instances probably better because they get um, very closely supervised by a very senior psychologist within the practice which is true that happens so in um, Andrew's case for example he has regular supervision with Frankie that manages the practice on a day-to-day -day basis and she's a clinical psych and he's doing great work of course if people aren't doing great work you will know about it because they'll start complaining hasn't happened but you need to choose your provisional psych well I guess in terms of going how could you potentially market your provisional psych because I, I, I do recognize that although um, you know a lot of stuff is universal across all practices because inevitably we're a business we're like any other business you know you might have um, you know some um, subtle differences in your practice based on your location for example um, and you might want to think about you know what your motivation is for taking on a provisional psychologist um, I for example um, well first of all let me, let me say that you know there are some people that sometimes take advantage of provisional psychs and want them to work for free we don't do that and I'm not saying that you want to do that um, we and I must say this and put this out there that we pay our provisional psychologists as as a employee so they paid according to the health professionals and support personnel I think is the award called uh, according to that award um, and they are he is employed so that's really important to know another important fact is that you cannot subcontract a provisional that is against APRA guidelines so they cannot be a subcontractor they have to be an employee and if it's a four plus two or five plus one I, I always recommend employing them but even if you are employing them you need to ask yourself what is the purpose of having this person here okay what role are they going to fulfill in the practice and that's going to inform a lot of your marketing um, for them but if you're doing marketing really well um, in general in terms of filling all your other clinicians which you want to do because you need to look after that part of your team as well I would just you know use that and channel um, certain referrals um, towards your provisionals um, some people I know will take on a provisional to offer a really low cost session especially this time of year when a lot of clients are running out of sessions and maybe they can't pay $180 out of pocket um, and then you might want to offer them to see a provisional psychologist 
you know, that is an option. That's something that you could market to your doctors um, and to your clients that's already part of the practice. Um, something else uh, that you can use to market a provisional psychologist is, um, hi Michelle, <laughs> thanks for joining us. What you can also do is really um, market to those doctors that don't want to do a mental health care plan because yes, there are some GPs that actually don't want to do mental health care plans because they're concerned about this being on somebody's record or maybe there's a client that meet a lot of criteria or has a lot of traits or maybe have a subclinical diagnosis but they don't meet full criteria and therefore they aren't eligible for mental health care plan that's what you can market to your doctors and go so if you're getting those clients rather than waiting for them to actually develop more symptoms get more unwell and then refer them to a psychologist let's be really proactive really, let's engage in um, you know prevention um, early intervention with these clients that's already struggling with mild symptoms and refer them to see our provisional psychologist that will be able to help them and that's really uniquely situated to help them because you don't need a referral and the out-of-pocket expense is limited okay that's that makes sense if not please um, post your questions below. Um, I would love to always get comments on you. And what I will also say, for example, um, in terms of charging, um, when we charge out my, my current provisional, um, Andrew, we charge him out at $100 flat rate per hour and if he does couples we charge 120 of course um, that being said provisionals can also see ATAPs the general ATAPs not ATAPs kids not ATAPs suicide prevention but they can do general ATAPs work for now at least under the current um, operational guidelines of the ATAPs funding okay i hope that that has been helpful um please um be sure to comment below let me know if you've got any additional questions related to this issue and um please feel free if you've got a specific question that you would like to ask go to the pin post in the group that says video of the week and pop in your question there and next week i might just be answering your question have an awesome week everyone and i will speak to you again soon bye